Hi guys, this is Todd from Bible Studies and Devotions. And today, uh, what I've got for you is a another visual experience, almost a comic book experience, an illustrated. Uh, this one isn't as much of a comic book as the Action Bible or the upcoming review I'm going to do on the Kingstone Bible. Uh, but this is illustrated by uh, 16 different artists from around the world and written by this gentleman, Jeff White. And uh, so the art styles are all different for the different stories of the Bible. Uh, we'll go over this little uh, paper that they sent out with it. Uh, illustrated Bibles and story Bibles have traditionally been targeted solely at children, but in an age of declining scriptural literacy, a new book aims to bring Bible stories to a more grown-up audience. I witnessed the visual Bible experience as a 256-page fully illustrated coffee table book that brings to life 39 Bible stories and beloved scriptural scripture passages, containing more than 120 original works of art by 16 artists from around the world. Eyewitness offers biblical narratives written from the perspective of the people in the stories. Eyewitness releases on September 1st. Research has shown that most people don't read the Bible much, if at all, said author Jeff White, who wrote an illustrated Bible story, uh, illustrated story Bible for children in 2017 called Friends with God uh, Story Bible. Many adults admit that the Bible feels intimidating. They aren't sure how to read the Bible, how to understand it, or even where to start with it. Eyewitness is an effort to change that. The book presents most of the major stories of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, with roughly half of the stories from the Old Testament and half from the New Testament. Eyewitness also features many stories by female characters, with about one-third representing women. One distinctive aspect of the book is that each story has been rewritten from a first-person perspective. All the Bible characters from Adam and Eve to Moses, Esther, and even Jesus himself tell their own stories from their unique points of view. The entire book is really a giant exercise in empathy. The first-person approach makes the story highly relatable because you discover that these Bible characters are far more like us, average everyday folks, than we usually assume, White said. The results are rather surprising. Uh, publisher Tom Schultz believes the art will draw a lot of people to the book. We recruited artists from 13 different countries on four continents to be part of this project, said Schultz, the president and founder of group. We wanted to present the Bible with images uh, that readers have never seen before. Something original, compelling, even a bit unexpected. We're thrilled with what these very creative and culturally diverse artists have dreamed up. The artists, all professional full-time illustrators, come from all over the globe, including Greece, Indonesia, Spain, Colombia, Poland, Brazil, Canada, Italy, Argentina, Turkey, Russia, and the UK. The publisher Enlist, enlisted the help of veteran Bible curriculum editors and Bible scholars to ensure that every story and passage interpretation remain true to Scripture. What one reads in Eyewitness is the same thing one would read in the Bible itself, except that it's retold with an engaging conversational quality. All right. Well, I cannot wait to dig in. Guru Publishing has produced a wide variety of Bible and Jesus-based resources uh, for more than 45 years, including the world's most popular vacation Bible school program and the best-selling Jesus Center Bible. Eyewitness is published under a group's Life Tree imprint. For more information, please contact Karen Henning at 970-292-4131 or visit www.group.com or www.iexperienceeyewitness.com. Okay, without further ado, now that that is out of the way, let's dive in, shall we? Let's see. Pass these stories down from generation to generation. Joel 1-3. Oh, man. The Bible is the best-selling book in history. Maybe you've heard the classic stories of Noah, Moses, or the Virgin Mary countless times, or maybe you're thinking Noah who. Either way, you've never encountered the Bible 
quite like this. With more than 120 imagined illustrations created by a diverse group of artists from all over the world, Eyewitness gives you a bold visual experience that will both inspire and surprise you. From Adam to Eve to Abraham, Rahab, even Jesus himself, you'll come face to face with the real people of the Bible. They share their innermost thoughts and feelings from a first person perspective as their extraordinary journeys with God unfold. Throughout all the stories, you'll discover the thread of God's unending love for people. Prepare to let these Bible stories open your eyes uh, as you too become an eyewitness to God's story in your life. All right, let's take a little peek, shall we? Eyewitness, the visual Bible experience. Okay. Acknowledgements and dedication. Okay, here we go. We've got uh, Adam, uh, first for everything. Eve, the taste of regret. Noah, Sarah, Abraham, Joseph, Moses, God's 10 instructions for the ultimate life. Rahab, Ruth and Naomi, David, Psalm 23, Solomon, a time for everything. Isaiah, Esther, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel, Jonah, Mary, the birth of the king, Satan, right here, right now. Jesus teaches on the mountainside. Nicodemus, the woman at the well, the accused woman, a Jewish lawyer, Martha, the wayward son, Simon Peter, Jesus' disciples. Jesus is the vine. John, the last supper, Jesus, Thomas, James, Peter, Paul, love is everything, all things new. And then your story. So let's take a little peek. At what some of these look like. A first for everything, Adam, Genesis 1 and 2. Before the beginning, there was God. There was no time, no light or dark, no breath, no death, nothing, just God. Then God decided it was time for a beginning. God spoke and nothing became a universe of everything. Endless emptiness exploded into stars, planets, and moons. God stamped vast horizons with mountains and canyons. His finger carved the land with rivers and seas. He painted the land with uh, infinite greenery, leaves and stalks and petals that waved beneath the breath of the skies. The world buzzed and sparkled and flowed and shivered and rippled and danced full of vibrant creatures that flew, swam, crawled, jumped, and slithered. With just his words, God forged creation in all its kicking and wandering and howling glory and utter breathtaking marvel. God delighted in what he, had, he made, but he wasn't quite done. Something's missing from this picture, and that is man. Interesting art style, beautiful. Let me just adjust this a little bit here. There we go. The creator wanted a com uh, company, a companion that mirrored his own image, and so God made me. He took some dirt from the ground and shaped it into a body then God breathed into my nose and filled my lungs with life. My heart jolted, my blood began to flow. I blinked open my eyes and became alive, alive. Then God made me a home, a garden of perfection he called Eden. God planted trees in the garden. Okay, now we're not gonna go through, uh, we're not gonna read the entire stories, but I just wanted to give you a little uh, picture of the illustrations, what they look like, and what the story was like. Okay, and now Eve, a taste of regret. Have you ever regretted something so much you'd give anything, anything to take it back? I have, and it rips my heart out every time I remember. You see, Adam and I had a good life, not just good, a perfect life. 
we lived in paradise, walking, waking each morning to, uh, to Eden and each other. We had no idea what we had until we lost it, lost it all, and it's my fault. Eden is one rule. Don't eat fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If we did, we'd one day fall asleep and never wake up. Death, God called it. Anything else we could enjoy to our heart's content. Sweet berries, fruit bursting with juice. They were ours for the taking, as much as we wanted. Plus, we had each other. I loved Adam, he loved me, and we both loved our maker. Besides, who cares about knowledge of good and evil? Doesn't sound very interesting, I muttered. Doesn't it? A serpent lay coiled beside me. His dark, clever eyes held a secret, his hiss low and reassuring as he spoke. I hear you and your man aren't allowed to eat fruit here in the garden, the serpent said. Is that true? You must have heard wrong. We can eat from any tree we want, and they're all so delicious. There's only one we can't touch, the tree over there in the middle, I explained. God said its fruit makes you go to sleep and never wake up. You can see that's a very interesting art style as well. Tears and rain. This is Noah. I'll never forget that last walk in the woods before, well, before everything changed. Dry leaves snapped beneath my feet. The sun cast speckled beams of warm light through the trees. I took a deep breath of flower-scented air. The beauty of God's creation filled me with pure bliss, and yet... And yet God was going to destroy it all. Nobody on earth appreciated God the way I did. Humanity had soured, become violent, dishonest, cruel, malicious. God's perfect world had become a pit of filth and depravity. I could only imagine how that broke God's heart. All our creator wanted was a relationship with us but they turn their backs on him. Mm. I felt sick when I heard God's plans, just gutted. My first thought was of my family, my wife and three sons, Shem, Japheth, and Ham. They had wives too. None of us was perfect, but we loved and worshiped God. Why kill my wife and kids? Why me? I can't tell you how relieved I was when God said he'd spare me and my family. We'd be the only people left on the planet, the only ones to watch glorious sunsets, kiss each other goodnight, and stretch our legs when we woke up in the morning, the only ones to get a do-over. But first, God wanted me to make a boat. Pride and Joy by Sarah. Well, I'm going to take the uh, jacket off of this book here. So it's a little easier for me to manage. Seeing in the Dark by Abraham.
In My Wildest Dreams by Joseph. You can see the multicolored coat. Potiphar's wife, no doubt. In prison. Interpreting dreams. His brothers. I burn for you by Moses. I'm not who you think I am. Never have been to tell you the truth. People think of me as a hero of the faith, God's chosen champion. If only you knew me back then. Oy. My identity has been in question since my first breath. I was born into a family of slaves, Hebrew slaves, poor, miserable, and forgotten. They called themselves a people of promise, but in truth, they were a people of suffering. But not me. When Pharaoh decided to kill all the Hebrew baby boys, my mother resisted. In order to save me, she abandoned me. She hid me in a basket along the bank of the Nile. And it was there, crying and alone among the reeds in the river, where Pharaoh's daughter found me. From that moment on, I became someone else. The adopted son of a princess. My life was a dream, sheltered within the lavish halls of the king of Egypt and undeserved. I didn't belong there. But did I belong anywhere? I grew up unaware of who I really was, who I was meant to become, oblivious of God's plan for my life. I had my first glimpse at my true identity when I visited the Hebrews. I knew I was one of them but I was also very much not one of them. I weaved my way through the mud pits where they were forced to make bricks, watching the Hebrews' agony unfold before my eyes. The Hebrews, my people, were living a literal nightmare. Every crack of the whip made me wince. It was impossible to watch and do nothing. When I saw an Egyptian slave driver beating one of the Hebrews senseless, I felt an uncontrollable fire ignite inside me. I glanced around to make sure no one was watching, and then I killed the slave driver, and I hid his body in the sand. But somehow, people found out I was a killer, including Pharaoh, who now wanted to bury my body in the sand. I escaped to the hill country of the Midians, hiding far away from my crime. I was a fugitive, a murderer, a privileged imposter. I didn't know who I was or where I was going. Oof, and I'll just, uh, oh, wow. Like I said, I don't want to read all of these stories. Uh, and I don't want to go through every single picture, but you can see this is uh, this is quite amazing, quite amazing, unbreakable by Rahab, and there's the the red cord that she. Uh, hung down from her window, was it? Or hung down, hung on her door so that she would be spared. Hmm. Ruth and Naomi. Now this is written like a play. And, uh, it, you know, you could even put together a little play with it. Uh... Ruth, remember what life was like back in Moab? I try not to. Things were hard back then. Hard. My husband died. Then your husband, my son, died. We were starving. We had no money. Things were horrible back then. I cried myself to sleep every night. We stuck together, though. It was so long. Where you will go, I will go. Where you live, I will live. 
your people will be my people and your God will be my God. It's very interesting. So even though this is all written by this, uh, was it Jeff White? Uh, by one author, he he does it in different uh, he does it in different styles. Like you saw, that one was in a play style, like a like like Shakespeare would write. Maybe here we've got young David and trying on the armor of uh, King Saul. Of course, that armor is going to be too big, and David doesn't need it, does he? He sure doesn't. Psalm 23. A time for everything from Ecclesiastes. Isaiah. Queen Esther. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel, the Lord of the Lions. Now that is a picture. Can you imagine feeling the hot breath of a gigantic hungry lion inches away from your face? Ooh. Jonah. Hmm. That's funny. I remember Jonah's story the way it started. I hate Assyrians. <laughs> he sure did. He did not want to go preach to Nineveh. But you can't escape God's plan. If God needs you, then God needs you. The birth of the king. Yeah, this is just, this is so good, so good. I mean, I can just see going through these. This is a first person from Satan, which is interesting. Don't call me the devil. People call me lots of names. Destroyer, beast, thief, prince of darkness. That's one of my favorites. I was called Lucifer once, a long, long time ago. These days, my friends just call me Satan, and I have lots of friends. Just don't call me the devil. I hate that name. It sounds so evil, and I am not evil. No, seriously, hear me out. All I try to do is help people. You know, give them what they really want. If anything, I'm a giver. All I ask in return is a bit of admiration. Maybe a tiny piece of your soul. What's so evil about that? Besides, you humans make it so easy. It doesn't take much to win you over. A little nibble of fruit, a flash of skin, the sparkle of a few pieces of silver. You know you want it, and I'm here to give it to you. 
So when I saw Jesus walking around in his skin suit on my turf, I couldn't help myself. I mean, he must have thought he was something special, being God's son and all. I know what God wants you to think about that guy. God's only son, born of a virgin, Messiah, Emmanuel, the perfect little prince of peace, savior of the world, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Blank him. At the end of the day, Jesus is just a human, someone with needs and wants, same as everyone else, nothing more than a walking, talking meat bag. And when this lion roars, this lion eats. I heard Jesus was out in the desert. He'd been there for 40 days praying or whatever, but he forgot to pack a lunch. How stupid do you have to be to go camping in the desert for 40 days without anything to eat, unless, you like to eat dirt, you'll get very, very, very hungry. And sure enough, he was. I walked up to Jesus like we were old pals, a sparkle in my eye and wearing the whitest crocodile smile I could muster. Jesus, divine happiness or the Beatitudes, do you want to be truly happy? Then you need the kind of lasting satisfaction that can come only from God. Let me tell you how to find it. You'll be happy when you understand that your life is worth nothing without God. The poor in spirit are right at home in God's kingdom. You'll be happy when you're genuinely heartbroken about the bad things you've done. God will wipe away your tears. You'll be happy when you let God take control of your life. The world belongs to the humble. You'll be happy when you crave justice and reconciliation. God will make sure you get them. You'll be happy when you treat others with compassion, especially those who don't deserve it. God will show you that same compassion when you need it the most. You'll be happy when you live your life with a pure heart and not with selfish motives. Only then can you truly see God in the world around you. You'll be happy when you live at peace with other people. That's what a child of God strives for. You can be happy even when people harass you and malign you for doing these virtuous things. God has reserved a place for you in his kingdom. And there's no better reward than that. You have heard it said, but I say. God's kingdom. By Nicodemus, I waited until after dark. Every little piece of me, the woman at the well. Hearts of stone by an accused woman. This is the woman caught in adultery. The Compassionate Samaritan. The One Thing, Martha's Story. The Long Road Home, The Prodigal Son. Rock the Walk by Peter.
Jesus is the vine, the last supper. In the garden of Gethsemane. tomb of scars and skeptics by Thomas I watched him die sky witness by James son of Zebedee Book of Acts. A new man, Saul to Paul. Love is Everything by Paul. All Things New by John, Revelation 21 and 22. Your story, what have your eyes seen? You probably haven't watched a dead person walk out of a tomb. You haven't slain a giant or been tossed into a pit of lions. You never parted the seas or walked on water. But that doesn't mean you aren't a part of God's story. There's plenty of story left to tell, including yours. Your story, your eyewitness matters just as much as Daniel, Esther, Peter, or any other Bible hero. Your journey with God is just as significant just as important as any of the stories in this book. And these are some of the authors here and their different styles and where they're from. How beautiful are the mountains, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news. Amen. Do I recommend this book? 100%. This is something very different than the Action Bible, very different um, than what the Kingstone Bible is. This first person narrative, um, plucked out of these main stories, is a great way to get a good foundation and a good idea of the Bible stories. If you're not aware, if you don't know who Ruth and Naomi are, if you don't know the story of Queen Esther, um, if you don't know the story of Noah, if you don't know the story of Adam and Eve, uh, if you don't know the story of any of these uh, things that are covered here, then, and you just find yourself uh, not being able to sit down and read the Bible and, and uh, read God's word firsthand because maybe you don't know where to start, uh, you don't know how to do it. Every time you try, it just it just seems like uh, meaningless to you, and, and you just feel like you're not getting anything out of it. This would be a perfectly okay place to start. Um, 
And even for somebody who is familiar with these stories, it might be even better uh, to just give yourself a different look at it, a different uh, perspective of the stories to make you think about some of the stories more, especially as it's uh, first person. To make you think, yeah, I wonder if that if that is what they were thinking. And I, I wonder what it was like for them going through this. So, uh, yeah, I just, I would um, absolutely recommend this book uh, to everyone. Especially um, people who just are more visual learners. Then I think this visual Bible experience... This eyewitness is a uh, is a great book to have around, and the different art styles are just really fantastic. What a good look at uh, different different styles of art. Just just from an art perspective alone, it is very neat to see these different styles of of illustration. I mean, I would think that any artist, even a non-believer, would love to look through this book just for the art itself um, because it's from 16 different authors, 13 different countries, four different continents, you know, and even being able to look here and say, oh, you know, this one was from Russia. Oh, this one was from Brazil. Oh, this style was from Greece. This style was from Spain. This style was from Turkey so on and so forth. I remember when I went through this book the first time, as some of the illustrations, I thought, oh, this looks kind of like a Spanish type of illustration. And uh, I had wondered if it was um, done by a Spanish uh, artist. And uh, see, like this one here, this Argentina one, this one reminds me more of like a Japanese, like an Asian type of uh, art. But, uh, but see, that, that guy is from Argentina. And uh, yeah, very interesting. Very interesting. I love it. I love all the different styles. Uh, you'll have something for everyone. Uh, there's the, the big eyed, the big eyed doll style. Uh, yeah. Some uh, hyper realistic, some very cartoony, um, some kind of abstract. And, you know, some. Just with a lot of like the 2D faces, you know, something that you'd see like from old, old paintings. Oh, man. It's just, just a really great book. Just a really great book and a, a great way to get you thinking about, uh, about these different stories. I would say get yourself one.